and welcome to Sport This Morning. I'm Cecilia Omogbe, broadcasting live from Benin City, Edo State, where the National Sport Festival is uh, taking place. These are the headlines uh, this morning. And of course, we're starting with the golden girl uh, talking about Grace Wonkocha. She, uh, for the first time in her career, Grace Wonkocha actually runs under 23 seconds, clocking a lifetime best of 22.79 seconds to qualify for the Tokyo Olympic Games in the 200 meters event, so she's actually joining Blessing Okagbari as the only two athletes to have qualified for the 100 and 200 meters event in Tokyo. Also on the program, and in football, Team Edo reigns supreme, claiming the gold medals in both the men and women's events. And the FA Champions League returns tonight, the second leg. Chelsea will be home uh, hosting FC Porto and Bayern Munich, of course will be away at PSG. We'll see if both teams can get into the second round because for Bayern Munich, they lost the first leg and Chelsea uh, won their first leg. Okay, but usually we're not starting, as usual, we're not starting with, of course, a football or anything, but we're starting with the National Sports Festival taking place right here in Benin City and I have a guest in the studio that will be doing all that with me. Two guests precisely but then one joining me first and the other will be talking athletics but then we're starting with football no matter what you will say yes we know when it comes to sports festival like this games olympics national sports festival there's everyone say track and field is the main event but then football is still the king of sports you are starting with football this morning because the host states both men and women's events they claim the gold medal i have john joshua akonji the sa media to the sports minister in the studio joining me for this segment Good morning, good to have you. Cecilia, good to be on the program, and thanks for doing a very wonderful job on the coverage of the National Sports Festival. Channels has been wonderful covering the festival. Kudos okay. to you, and kudos to everybody on channels. Thank you so much. Okay, overall, how has it been, the sports festival? I mean, we've been some complaints here and there, and all that things really not going well, talking about scheduling and everything. And all. Let's start off with that before we delve into football. I mean, sports is all about the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the most in important thing is that it's, it's been full of excitement. It's been full of very, very remarkable performances. It's been full of uh, impressive individual and team performances. When you talk about Agna Sagbar, a young girl from Bielsa State that has won 15 medals, that's quite amazing. And for me, that's remarkable. And in Sikurika from Anambra State, another young girl, gymnast, that has done very well at just the age of 12. Those, for me, are the very remarkable performance. And, of course, you cannot take away one thing. A deputy governor winning the gold medal at the festival <laughs> is something that is very, very interesting. And, for me, Mwokocha, you know, not only qualifying for the Olympics, but also in both the 200 and the 100 meters is very remarkable. Also, Enoch, yeah, re-enacting his performance which is an indication of the fact that his performances over time yeah. is not a fluke. Mm -hmm. And so the foreign athletes have somebody that can challenge them. For me, those are the high points of the festival so far. Yeah, you want to pick up. Okay. All right, let's talk football now. I mean, yes, you, you already mentioned it, uh, talking about the deputy governor winning a good medal. <laughs> How many minutes did he play? Like one? <laughs> okay. The, the most important thing that. is that he was good medal medal score, right? <laughs> <laughs> good Okay, we started with football. and talking about the game between Team Lagos and Team Edo. And for Team Edo, there were two goals down. You know, somehow they were able to come back from two goals down to win 3-2. We knew it was going to be a tough game because judging from what happened in the morning, we'll come back to that uh, later. But then Team Lagos, you know, they, they had all it takes to actually win this game. But somehow Team Edo were resilient because before the game, they already said the only thing they're aiming for is gold. And they went all the way to, to get that. Yeah, that, that's, that's part of the excitement of, of, you know, an event like this. The fact that you never say never, the fact that it's never over until it's over, the fact that until the very dying second, anything can just happen. And like they say in football, football is like crackers. You never can tell where it will crack. And so for Lagos State to have imagined, I mean, given the pedigree of Edo State, nobody is going to write them off. Forget about the fact that they are hosting the festival. Edo State is, oh, we all know Edo State with a strong tradition in sports and all that, and they have consistently maintained that, you know, status over time. So, but I, I think, for me, it was very exciting, the fact that Edo were able to come back from the dead and yeah. winning that match. I, I think it's, it's really one of the exciting moments of, of the festival so far. Yeah, an interesting moment from the game. You know, let's get reactions from that game. I mean, how they were able to make it because sometimes it can be very difficult, but resilient paid off for Team Edo at the end of the day. Yeah, 
it's uh, Lagos and Edo that have won because this is a unity game. And you can see that the game, both Lagos and Edo, they were very, very tactical and they were good. From two goals down, for my boys to come and equalize and win, it's the, uh, I would say the, the god of football and the luck is on our side wow. because the Lagos team did very well. So for me, both Lagos and Edo have won this game. And that is why uh, it's called Unity Game. I'm excited. Uh, right from time, we know that we're going to win the match because uh, we saw the Lagos team scoring two goals first, but I was not afraid because my boys were still playing according to instruction. And when the goals chances came, they took it. So I'm excited, I'm happy. Uh, we have gotten one or two players from Lagos that will have to come to bend their assurance. So we can see, even as we are playing, we are looking at them. Now, I have two players from Lagos that wow. we'll be inviting to bend their assurance. That is the spirit of the game. The, 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 the overall table between Delta and Edo, and until it's over, it is not over. But the good news is that whether Edo win, or Delta win, or Lagos win, Nigeria has won. All right. I mean, he already said that he's going to get two players from the team to Bene Insurance. We don't know if those two players want to play in the National League because we know that Bene Insurance is actually playing in the Nigerian National League currently. But with the right motivation, right resources, of course, they want to come. Absolutely. Uh, you, you know, part of the principle yeah. of the festival is to discover talent. And for a good coach who has knows for talent, You'll be able to spot talent that you know their future is very bright and they're also going to strike a rhythm that will re-echo with time to come. It's not just in football, but in all the other sports. Because what we're talking about is the future of Nigerian sports. And I think, for me, that is a key message of the National Sports Festival. Talent discovery, bonding, and of course, all the ripple effect that this festival has had over Edo State and Nigeria in general. Yeah, talking about fair play. Okay, let's listen to additional Yusuf. That's the coach of Lagos team. I appreciate my boys. They played very well. They played with instructions. It's not easy to play against uh, host team. They good good accounts of themselves. But in, in football, either you win or you lose. But we are playing host team. They have one advantage for their side, deputy governor, which is a big image in Edo State. So I, I don't I've told my boys they should come down, they should play that which they did. But the two goals they scored against us, it was a foul, but I can't do anything about that. It is a referee decision. Let me thank the Lagos State Government, the Lagos State Sports Commission and Lagos State Football Association. By Mr. Sheyaku me and, and Mr. Tadi Aziz. They have been doing well for football in developing Lagos. We have a lot of plan in football, which I believe because we have under 13, we have under 15, we have under 17. So we are going to places, no problem. This boy will keep them together to make sure that we keep, we, we train them to make sure that they give good account of themselves because there are a lot of competition for Lagos State. And you know, in Lagos, we develop, we don't believe in established players, which most of these boys, they are from academics, which they prove themselves today and they make Lagos State proud and satisfied with their performance. Right? I mean, they don't believe in established, uh, established players, but the boys that they have, they groomed them and they were able to win silver. I love everything he said, but let's leave the men and quickly talk about women. It was just one goal, Team Edo defeating Lagos by a lone goal. Of course, Moses uh, was the one who scored that goal. She was really happy about it. But after the game, the controversy that follows is something that we don't want, really want to see. It was a beautiful game, beautiful picture, you know, the kind of play, the way the girls are set up and all that, the young stars that they were that they were picked for that were picked for this game was really amazing. But the way the goal actually came, I mean a flying header and uh, Moses just got there and she nicked that in. And after that, of course, Team Edo won. But Team Lagos apparently were not happy with that. And after the game, well, it was a chaotic scene at the end of the day. Pictures you don't want to see what well, this is how the goal came. You know, just that particular a free kick and of course a flying header and he went into the net and he went on to win the game after that goal uh, one minute at a time that's why the injuries to the goalkeeper and one other player that's the header there a clean goal you would say worthy of a medal but at the end of the day team Lagos were not really happy about it yes we've seen the goal but let's take a look at the pictures you know coming from this uh, a game it wasn't a sight that most of us really want to see team Lagos we're not happy that they lost the gold medal because they expected that they were going to 
win the game. Spirits of sportsmanship, that's what everyone talks about. But sometimes when it uh, degenerates to a situation whereby players just can't accept that they lost. Now this uh, goalkeeper I was treated for a long time before she was able to leave the pitch and all that. And then the referee just added one minute time. And Team Lagos went berserk after final, berserk after final whistle. And yeah. they just started the whole process of trying to, you know, have a kind of uh, physical with the security operators and all that. These are the pictures I'm talking about. Not something we really want to see at all. And that the point I want to make is the education of our players, our athletes, on the spirit of sportsmanship. You win some, you lose some, but this did not apply here at all. Absolutely, Cecilia, it's most unfortunate, and uh, we have always conversed the need for fair play for people to learn to play by the rules. I mean, in every sport, it's either you win or you lose. And when you lose, you must be magnanimous in defeat. You must also learn to stay calm so that uh, we do not degenerate to level of barbarism. I mean, sports is about unity, it's about friendship, it's about bonding, it's about creating, you know, a bridge across the divide. And when people tend to behave like this, uh, it, it sends the wrong signal. And I guess uh, the rules must always be applied when, the pe when people go off the track, as it were. Yeah, when, when you mean the rules, I mean, they should be sanctioned or something. Absol so absolutely. I mean, any, anyone that flouts the rules of the game knows that there's a penalty and they should not be spared. Mm -hmm. I mean, the rules are the rules and the rules must be respected. The rules are meant for the sportsmen and they must adhere by it all the time. The, important of, the importance of sports is the fact that you know that there are certain things that you shouldn't do. And when you go off the bar, of course, you should be ready for the penalty as it were. Yeah, apparently. What about the issue of educating these uh, athletes? Because some of them don't even understand what it means. Either they're too young, maybe before uh, sports festivals like this, uh, major competitions like this, maybe we can have a seminar for some of these players on the spirit of sportsmanship. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Cecilia, but the import of this is the fact that at the state level, at the local level, at the level of directors of sports and all that, there's always this reminders that look, these are the rules and regulations of the festival. Please adhere by it. But like you said, it's also important to re-echo it yeah. so that people can stay in line. I mean, let's not pretend about it. Violence is an abhorrence to sports development yes. and nobody should condone it in any form whatsoever. And I think it should be condemned in totality and sanction should be meted out so that it will serve as a deterrent to others who may, may want to toe the same line. We definitely want to do the same. I hope it won't happen again quickly. We we'll just listen to the girls who are talking about winning the gold medal. I mean, after the whole uh, issue of fights and all that, yeah, they were the girls for me. They were really happy that they got the medals. Football is king, and, and I'm glad to be here this morning. I really wanted to watch the final uh, female football uh, game because female football is is on the rise. You've seen, uh, apart from youth football development, FIFA is committed to developing female football. We can say we've arrived when it comes to male football. You know, this country will do great anytime with the Super Eagles. And then I've watched basketball. Terrific. You see the raw talent. What, what validates that more than the fact that for the first time, this country has a record of taking the female and male basketball teams to the Olympics. That is, that is excellent. And then I've watched handball this morning. Fantastic. Wrestling. Another place where we have talents who are world beaters, number one, number two in the world in wrestling. They're from this country. I was glad to watch wrestling. Uh, of course, I missed badminton. I wish I'd watched badminton. We're doing great there. Um, I've watched a couple. Then, the king of all, track and fields, athletics. We saw those young girls. Some of them, we invested in them under our adopt an athlete program. We've been funding them, $10,000, $20,000. You can pay their coaches. They can get the right nutrition they need. And we've seen that work for us. And we're going to intensify that. We're going to pick all of them together on our Olympic team. We'll make sure they're properly funded. I think the future is bright for our sports. We just need to have a sustainable model. And that's the challenge we have as a ministry to sustain, build a sustainable model that will grow this talent. Sustainable model, that's what it's all about in a sport generally. That's the Minister for Sports and all this. Just talking about, you know, he's been at the games at different centers and all. But I won't let you leave without asking this money, these issues concerning the LOC and the MOC, you know, main organizing committee and the local organizing committee concerning the issue of, you know, releasing funds and all that. What, what's the update on that? Uh, I mean, Cecilia, the process is very clear. In the history of the festival, no government has ever given money to state. 
there's an MOU between the local organizing committee and the MOC. The MOC are the owners of the festival, yeah, okay. and there's a sharing formula. In, under the terms of agreement, there's nowhere where it is indicated that the federal government or the Ministry of Youth and Sports should give the local organizing committee money. But these are very trying times as a result of the outbreak of COVID-19, which led to a lot of postponement. And so the minister then approached the government and looked, can we assist? Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. It's an assistance. It's not an obligation. But there's a process. Government is a process. The minister writes, the presidency, you don't understand. It's yeah. going to come under a special funding. There was no budget for it. Okay. And I think we must understand this. And that's the, import, the importance of communication. The, the minister had always communicated with the government that, look, this is a process. Everything is being done to ensure that the money that was supposed to be like a bailout or an assistance is given to Edo State Government, but it's not an obligation, and I think we should just get the first right. Okay. That there's a process, and the process is ongoing, and I'm sure that once it is ready, the government has given reassurance that they are going to give the assistance, and I believe that we should raise the matter there. So when will the money come to the host state? You know? I, I mean, uh, Cecilia, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I, you, know, you know, I'm not in a position to answer that okay. question, but the truth of the matter is that there's a process, okay. and the process must be followed through. It's still ongoing. It's ongoing. Yeah, hopefully, this process is going to end tomorrow. Okay. I want to say before it ends, they might get the money. I mean, <laughs> but, I mean it's an okay. assistance that they promise. Yeah. So, I mean, they have gotten reassurance, and I'm, I'm sure that... They will live up to the uh, expectation and the promise as it were. Okay, I want to thank you so much for taking our time to come to the program this morning. Thank you, Cecilia, <laughs> and thank you for doing a yeoman's job of the National Festival. Kudos to the Channel TV. Thank you so much. All right, we need to take a little time out now because we'll be talking track and field next. And of course, the focus is the Golden Girl, talking about Grace Wonkocha, Chiran. Uh, she runs only 23 seconds, yeah, for the first time, more like a lifetime best for her, 22.79 seconds. And of course, she's qualified for the 200 meters of the Tokyo Olympic Games. All right, we have uh, Charles Debayo. <laughs> Charles Ogundia is in the studio with me. And of course, we'll be talking track and field. And we're starting off with Grace Umokocha. And you know the reason why. Uh, she's, she's won three good medals so far, the 100 meters, 200 meters, and the 4 by 100 meters. And she told me that she will be running the Miss Relay for the 4 by 100 meters, uh, Miss Relay 4 by 100 meters tomorrow. So it simply means if Team Delta should win that, should have won four gold medals. Charles, good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning, Cecilia. It's been a wonderful time in the city of Edo, your town. So to say, I've been enjoying myself all this while. It's a good one seeing Grace yesterday running and um, claiming that uh, title, especially the Olympic qualification. It's a good one for this young athlete and she has been on fire this year uh, since the start. Since after the, uh, the lockdown, she has been good and congratulations to her and Delta States for winning that gold medal. Yeah, I mean, the, the way she started the race, we want to see pictures of that. The way she started, I mean, from the beginning to the end, it was like effortlessly, like she was just in a class of her own. And when she started running, my heart actually went back to Ellen Thompson, the way she bent and all that, so similar to the way she runs. And of course, you look at Bless Nokagbari, when they start off, the way they start, the way they just continue, and just go on and on. She had the target at heart, and that's how she was able to achieve that. If you look at the way she has been running since the start of the year, especially when she won the, uh, the Olympic, when she qualified for the 100 meters too. It was a case of, I have a target, I have where I'm going to, I have what I want to do, and this is the way I want to go about it. And she has been doing that, which is good for, this is something we have been missing in this part of this country for, for some time now. And I, I think we should be able to thank our coach too. I don't really know who's coaching her, but I think the work of the coach is really showing because most, most times it's the stats. That's always the problem for most of these athletes. But she has been getting her stats right. And she, the bend and everything has always been perfect for her. Grace has been a wonderful athlete for, for Nigeria and for herself this year. Hmm. Queen of the moment. Yes, bless Nokagbari. Watch out to this guy. I love the fact that we're having more competitions now in the 100 and 200 meters. So going to the Olympics, we know right now we can tell you that we have two athletes for 100 meters and 200 meters. And of course, you know these athletes would definitely be going for good. Let's listen to Grace, how excited she is, winning three medals so far. Still looking forward to having another one. I'm, I'm really happy. At least it's showing that we are working hard. And then I believe in the Olympics, we'll be, we'll be at the podium. I believe so. Well, 
I wasn't expecting it here because my coach would keep telling me to come here. But I was saying, coach, I don't want it to be to come here. I wanted it to be to be in another competition, like me concentrating on just the 200, so I can be able to to make the standard. But I'm so surprised that it came out in my finals, and I'm I'm happy about that. <laughs> There's nothing much to say. It's all God. God did it for me. I, I have no power of my own, but I, I really thank God for it. I'm happy. I'm happy. Ellen Thompson? <laughs> well, I, I truly like her transitions in the 100 meters and the, probably the 200. I enjoy her when, when watching her race. I, I enjoy it. I think um, more of competitions will make athletes perform very well. More of competitions. Because when you keep training and you're not competing, it's actually bringing you backward, but when you keep competing, it makes the, the body to open more for performance to, to come, come out. So I believe more competitions will make athletes to perform very well. Yeah, Alavi Akintola is definitely another athlete we want to talk about when it's 200 meters men for Team Ejo. Yeah, were well, you surprised by Akintola? Alaba he was almost there. Alaba was almost Alaba, there. Alaba and um, if you look at the two of them, the one and Enoch Adegoki, yeah. uh, it's, it, didn't, it was not a surprise to me for them achieving that. The two of them have been together from secondary school and they've been running together from secondary school, school related team and stuff like that. So they've been a kind of a motivating factor for each other. This one will be there. The, you can see the two of them, gold, silver, gold, silver. It has always been like that. I also hope Alaba can really do it to and qualify for the Olympics because yeah. it's going to be a good one for Nigeria. We, we, we are now having some athletes. I'm looking forward to Alaba end up doing sub 10 too so that we can have good runners in the 4 by 100 meter. It's been, we have about three athletes now in, in uh, America that have done sub 10 in the last one year, last two years. Um, Divan Uduru, Shekiri have done sub Shekiri, 10 yeah. too. Shekiri was at this championship too. And, um, it wasn't his championship. It wasn't his championship, <laughs> but he was there. But yeah. we have done sub 10 and we have uh, um, Raymond yeah. that's done sub 10. So it's really looking good for Nigeria. After so long that we've been, we've been having it so bad in track and field. This year, I think we, we have a better option. And maybe let's say the COVID is going to help us because if the, 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 uh, there was no COVID, maybe Grace wouldn't have qualified. Yeah. Maybe uh, some others wouldn't have qualified, but we are having them now. Ophelia is also there too, yeah. who has already qualified for the 200 meters for women. It's a good one for Nigeria. It's, it's a good one. And right here on, on the track, I mean, I, I can, everyone's mm -hmm. actually happy for Akinsola you know, Alabi, uh, Alaba because it's always, it's always uh, Enoch Adeguke that is always at the top. But somehow he got the 200, Enoch got the 100, and he finished second in the 100. And right here, you, you're having him winning the gold medal. And of course, we go straight to the 4 by 100 meters men. Edo State also won that. So it simply means between Enoch Adegoke and Alabi, they have one, one, uh, two gold each and one silver. And they are looking forward <laughs> to winning the third one too. Yeah. They are looking, Alaba have won um, two gold medals, mm -hmm. one silver. Mm -hmm. Enoch have won one gold, one silver. Mm -hmm. Now they are looking at the yeah. mixed relay too. Two gold. And it, Four by 100 gold also, then the 100 meters. So the, 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 the two, two good medals. So yeah. it's, 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 let me say it's their championship. Alaba was at the, the last championship yeah. in uh, Abuja, came back with nothing. nothing. But this time around, and I think what really affected his progress compared to Enoch was that after secondary school, according to them, he stopped. Yeah. He stopped. He stayed off track, and it took uh, Enoch and some others to say, "Guy, come back and let's continue running." For him to return, maybe that has affected his progress a little. But going forward, now I think he will continue to to come back to himself and maybe challenge Enoch to in hundred going forward. Yeah, maybe that's what he's going to do. There you have the race, the four by hundred meters men's relay final, and just that last running done by the Chidera. Yeah, this is Chidera is here because they did that uh, final lap, and which is really great. And they have Arowo Lo too. Arowo Lo, yeah, he managed also. drafted to you know have the third leg and all that. Let's get reaction from these guys. You know how excited they are winning the gold medal for Team Edo. We all feel great because right before this competition, we've all been talking about it. I've said it's good or nothing. So the party has been about gold. So and thank God today the beating next was so superb, and we came out on top. So I'm so we are so glad about it today. We're actually coming here, there are only two teams here, Team Edouard and the rest. So we're actually running against the rest. And we prove them that we are the best. 
we are elated and we are excited by the performance. We really thank God for that. Uh, it was a very good thing to me because all of us, we are doing good. We are good to go. Yeah, I've worked for the gold medal and I think the best thing for me is just to win the medal. And which I did, exactly that. It doesn't mean anything, it's what I've been working for. This is more or less like a training session for me, so I just have to execute everything and bring out the outcome as planned. I think talking about training tour in Nigeria, that factor is not working. Because we've not been going for any training tour. We just have to go get the waiting round and execute our race. Nothing more. It's, it's God's grace. <laughs> so the little training sessions we did didn't really it really counted a lot. It really counted a lot. Yeah, these guys there you have it, Enoch Adeguke, Emmanuel Rowolo, of course, Chidera Izeko, and of course uh Alaba Akintola, the four of them winning medals for Team Edo. Let's go to the women now. For Team Edo, they were disqualified uh, even before the race started because uh, one of the ladies actually beat the gun and because of that, they were disqualified. But Team Delta, when you're having grace, you know, <laughs> anchoring it, of course, there's no doubt about the fact that she will definitely be the one to lead Team Delta to win. And S.A. Brume also ran with the, the team, talking about the 4 by 100 meters women's really team delta no doubt about that these ladies once you see the lineup you know that yes favorite team delta lagos also was favorite immediately edo was disqualified all eyes were okay grace is here this race is i for think grace. edo was delta. able edo was able to to perfect their act you know the guy that ran the, the, the final leg of the four by 100 meter guys actually jumped gone too in 100 meters so they, I think they realized that these people are yeah, not ready to. Yeah. They, so they decided to put him at the last for the for, for the for the two relay. Even in the in the eighth in the semi final, that's what they did. And I think maybe they will have done that for the ladies too because they have some experienced uh, athletes in that team too that are used to the crowd, that are used to that kind of environment. But at the end of the day, data you should know they with Elze Brumen with. Um, Ofuku, with grace, you, you expect them to do something, and that's what they did. They did something, and that's exactly and what they did. And the two gold for Eze Brumen, she won the long jump. The long Brumen jump also, too. and long jump. Remember, and oh, she, won, she, she won bronze in high jump, high and jump. so many, so many medals. <laughs> Eze Brumen's story will be told tomorrow, because it's interesting <laughs> how you come to a championship. She literally did everything, everything. track and field. She did the, the, the Apart from 200 meters. That's the That's the <laughs> <That's really laughs> high jump. This long jump, the triple jump. You can imagine during the night jump, she was jumping and she was running at the same time. The, the, the 100 meters. Exactly, which was really key. I mean, I love what she did there. But these ladies, uh, you know, did something remarkable. And of course, Team Delta went on to win another gold medal. So it's three gold medals for them. And that's, you know, the first class and then they had to come back again. You know, I think there's a, whole, a lot of delay and everything. But at the end of the day, it all, it all pans out well. Let's just take a look at the medals table before we go back to our Lagos uh, studio where Yemi Adebayo is standing by to talk about all the sports, uh, especially the UEFA Champions League. But then, before we do that, we'll have to look at the men's table, what it is looking like. Yeah, you still have the race, you know, coming on how Team Delta were able to, you know, get that now. Just look at the gold medals. So it simply means there is nothing Edo can do about this. How many events do you have left? We still okay. have, uh, I think, there's, there's still some weightlifting, yeah, maybe, maybe here weight and there. Yeah, yeah. But this is, this is uh, yeah, data again. Distance. It's already uh, 100, 103 gold medals, silver 82, bronze medals 72. In all, they have 257. Edo is second with 88. Biasa, of course, 41. Rivers, 24. And Lagos, 19. No doubt, these are the states we are looking at. We're also looking at Aqua Ibom a little bit. I think Inse actually made that so popular. And Edith Young also were thinking, yeah. okay, these girls. And when it comes to weightlifting and wrestling, it might just be another team. But wrestling is still ongoing. to so see yeah. if they can actually close the gap. But from what it's looking like, I think by tomorrow, when we're wrapping up the sports festival and on Thursday, we're doing the final medals table. It's going to be in this order. No, seriously, looking at data states, they've been doing this thing year after year mm. after year. And I'm looking forward to a state that will detrone them. I think they have their ways of doing things. They have their ways of recruiting their athletes. They have the, even when you're looking at some top athletes that came for data that you expect that they throw to win good, some from nowhere were actually getting the good medals for them. And it's, it's a good one. It's a good one, for the, it's a good one for the state. Look at um, people are looking up to, people are looking up to uh, Mike Edwards to win the, um, high, the job. high job, but oh, it was somebody from Delta. Yeah. The guy just came from nowhere, 
uh, Mike just defeated him in Lagos just two weeks ago. And the guy, so we, uh, other states should learn about what debtors are doing and see how they can really develop sports in, from all the states. Yeah, real development, not just talking. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Cecily Amog, but we're straight back to Lagos Studio where Yemi Adebayo is standing by. Charles, thank you so much for coming on the program. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. We'll get back to Lagos soon. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Cecilia, for all the updates from the National Sports Festival. We'll continue with the show from the Lagos studio. There's a lot to talk about in your amazing fast-paced uh, world of sports. Good morning once again. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let's bring you into all that we are doing on the show today. You've heard a lot of things about the sports festival, and I'm very sure you want to say a teen or two about what you've seen, what you've heard, and the uh, updates we have given to you about the National Sports Festival. So this is what you need to do. Talk to us this morning. Tweet at that handle you have on your screen, at channels underscore sports. Let's know what you're thinking about. Let's feel your pause right here on the show this morning. It's going to be very interesting to uh, know what you are thinking about this lovely Tuesday morning. Before I introduce my guest on the show this morning, uh, let's a little matter of stadium rehabilitation, sports facility upgrade, talking about the national stadium, the MKO Abiola Stadium, as it is now called. Let's listen to the sports minister, Sunday Diary, give us updates on what is going on, the, 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 the progress reports, the situation with the renovation of that stadium. We'll come back for more on Sports This Morning. By handing over the facility to Dangote Group of Companies under the well public acclaimed and applauded, adopt a pitch policy drive of the Honorable Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Honorable Sunday Dari. Dangote Group has adopted the member of Abuja Stadium and presently rehabilitation work is ongoing under the sponsorship of Dangote. You will also recall that apart from the member, all other component facilities of the stadium were used for the just, during the just concluded one service, one medal, or some games. That is, the military and paramilitary officer games festival in January 2021. If the stadium is deployed to the magnitude portrayed by the Blueprint Weekend newspaper, there is no way such an important event like the Somme Games would be hosted in the stadium. The velodrome was used for Zoom Games recently, and it is currently being used for athletes during training on a daily basis by the Cycling and Taekwondo Federation of Nigeria, amongst other sports federations, and not being used as warehouse as stated in the publication. All right, Sports Ministry refuting claims made in uh, one of the daily newspapers about the state of the stadium. The Deputy Director of the Ministry uh, in the giving updates uh, on behalf of the Sports Minister, or by extension of the Sports Ministry, letting us know um, what is actually happening uh, right there. All right, so that, that's it. A very good one uh, for, uh, for all of us that want to know what is currently going on and of course pictures right there on your screen uh, if you really want to know what's going on with the stadium okay all right so uh, it's time for me to uh, introduce my partner on the show this morning he's making his debut on the show and I hope there's going to be a lot to come uh, talking about uh, Shemi Lori uh, Adeneko he makes his uh, debut on the show this morning Shemi Lori uh, I want to say good morning and thanks for being with me on the show good morning Mr. Emi thank you for having me I'm honored to be here all right thank you very much okay so uh, I I'm going to ask you maybe you give me a response in a, in a, in a minute you've seen pictures mm. you you've Sing clips of the National Sports Festival, the 20th edition. I just want to get your impression. Um, it's very interesting, but what I'm taking, what I'm very impressed with, is the quality of the quality of the women. I feel like we need to put more money there if possible. Mm -hmm. The talent, so the ta Nigeria is a big population. 
talent doesn't surprise me that it's there, but the quality in which the women displayed in that football match mm -hmm. was quite good. Obviously, the altercations at the end, mm -hmm. we don't want to see that in a beautiful game. Yeah. But I feel like, especially with football, referees, not just in Nigeria, everywhere. Across the globe. Across the globe. Referees need to understand that respect is mutual. Respect needs to go both ways, between the players, referees, and the fans. Mm -hmm. So I believe the altercation was because one minute was added on instead of... A longer Probably period. should be more. It should have been more because of the goalkeeper who was taken off in the injury. So things like that just need to be fine-tuned across the game. But overall, I'm impressed. It's track and field as well. Um, the lady who ran several events, mm -hmm. I think high jump, 200 meters. Sabrina. Yes. That's very impressive. So mm -hmm. it's good to see. It's good to see. And I hope that transpires into the... Olympic national um, Nigerian athletes represent, representing us in the Olympics. All right, I hope so as well. All right, let's move on on the show. And um, uh, okay, let me read a couple of tweets because I, I always promise to read your tweets. Maybe I'll do that before we go on a break. Uh, this one's from Taiwo Olabanji. He's talking about the sports festival. Says it won't be uh, a bad idea for the national sports ministry to adopt the template used by Delta State at every national sports festival. Okay. And uh, this one from Uto Uto says, uh, great and improved achievement so far uh, at the Edo Meet. That, that's what it's calling mm -hmm. <laughs> the <laughs> National Sports Festival. <laughs> However, I wonder where is Akwai Bomb stayed, all right? Uh, okay, the people from Akwai Bomb will be able to answer that. <laughs> and uh, this one from Joseph says, it was sad to see the post-match Wahala, the one you alluded yes. to, um, uh, after the women's uh, football game, it takes away the shine yes. of the event. And we agree with you on that as well. All right, let, all right, we need to go on a break right about now. When we return from the break, we'll talk about the UEFA Champions League. And we'll also give you a slice of basketball on the show. Don't go away. We'll return after this break. All right, it's time to talk about the UEFA Champions League, but somebody just said something on Twitter that I need to react to. Nobleman Flyer, at Nobleman Flyer, says, Yemi, try and read tweets is annoying when you don't... I'm just reading your tweets. I'm reading a lot of tweets. <laughs> I'm reading a lot... Maybe just my hand didn't get to yours. So uh, apologies if you feel offended, but I just read yours. All right, let me go to you uh, quickly. Let's talk about the UEFA Champions League okay. and... Um, in whatever you order you want it, but, but that's, that's the way it is right now. Maybe you want to start with uh, PSG, PSG Bayern. Yeah. Um, PSG go back to the Pac de France with three away goals, mm -hmm. and I expect them to pick up where they left off. As a defensive, when they fall into a defensive unit and soak up the pressure, they're very vulnerable. So I expect them to be full throttle, to go at Bayern Munich, to really put the pressure back and put them on the back foot because Bayern play with a high line. Mm -hmm. As for Hansi Flick's Bayern, the champions, they have to come out. They have to come out blazing. They have to come out and get some away goals because, like I said, PSG have three away goals. Um, I expect they have a couple of injury scares. Sule, Kimmich, a bit unsure. Coleman as well, a bit. But without... Oh, sorry. I expect... I was going to say, I expect Hansi Flick to really put emphasis and expect more from Sane mm -hmm. and his wingers because without Lewandowski, it's Chupamoting up front. It doesn't pose a threat to mm -hmm. the PSG backline of Kimpembe and Maquinos. So... It's going to be an interesting game, and PSG seek revenge from the last year's final, so if they, hopefully they can pull through. I prefer PSG to pull through, personally. Are, are we saying Bayern is not as effective, as good as we think they are? It's just one player, and, and it looks like the firepower is, it, is, not, is not there. It's not just because it's just one, he's a senior player at that. See, when Muller came in as well, mm -hmm. Muller was performing, a big game player as well. So I expect the younger players, even though they're young, they're mm -hmm. still experienced, mm -hmm. Sanic, Kingsley Coleman. Coleman yeah. You expect them to step, up to, in step this, up to step up in this game. And it's going to be very, very interesting. The firepower of combating, going against the firepower of Mbappe and Neymar, we saw what they did in the first leg. So they're involved, they're the Mavericks, and they're involved in more or less every goal mm -hmm. that PSG scored in the first leg. All right, Chelsea and, and, and Porto, a lot of people already say <laughs> it's curtains for Porto. It's, it's very, very hard for Chelsea to throw this tie away. Very, very hard. Considering they won 2 0 and they were not their best Chelsea. Mm -hmm. they, they were very efficient. Goals with, from Chiwell and Mason Mount. Fantastic goal from mm -hmm. Mason Mount. But it's, very, very, it's going to be very, very hard for Chelsea to throw this way because Porto have to come out on the front foot. I expect Thomas Tuchel to maintain the back three as he did in the first leg and just absorb pressure as they always, as they do more often than not. 
So I, I believe this, this tie is curtains. I believe this tie is curtains. All right. All right, that's it. Uh, one more tweet. Uh, Joseph Omega will say it's a tough night for Bayern against uh, PSG. Uh, just like Shemi Lurie said, they said, but you, you have a Champions League spring surprises, mm -hmm. and this could be one of those great comeback stories. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Let's go to the NBA quickly, take a look at the results. And, of course, Shemi Lurie is going to tell us the stories behind some of those results. Let's see. The, the, the fixtures. Uh, the Dallas Mavericks lost to the Philadelphia 76ers, uh, 95 points, 113. New York Knicks beat uh, the Lakers, still missing Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Minnesota Timberwolves and the Brooklyn Nets. That game was not played in the wake of a shooting incident. Orlando Magic lost to the San Antonio Spurs, 120 to 97. Memphis Grizzlies defeated Chicago Bulls, 101 to 90. Points. They have the uh, New Orleans Pelicans also defeating the Sacramento Kings. Utah Jazz lost to the Washington Wizards. Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook doing the job on that one. 23rd triple double for Russell Westbrook. And you have the Golden State Warriors and the East Tree Maker. Talking about Steph Curry uh, surpassing Will Chamberlain uh, in that one. Scored 53 points, 106 to 107. Then Phoenix Suns defeated uh, the Houston Rockets, 126 to 120 points. Shame, Luria, I need to get your thoughts. Maybe you'll start with uh, the amazing um, <laughs> Steph Curry. Yeah, that's the main talking point from NBA games last night. Steph Curry and the all-time franchise record scorer now, 53 points. Mm. One of the, be the best shooter we've ever seen in the game. Sure. Single-handedly, without doubt, without a debate. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's beautiful to see what he's doing there. Considering he's the out and out, the only out-and-out scorer in that team, putting the team on his back. Mm -hmm. And now 10th in the West, so they're in the playing, um, the playing places because this year they're having six go through and then seven, eight, nine, ten, they're going to go off in, in playing games. So they can still make the playoffs and they should make the playoffs. But to t even the Nuggets as well, Jamal Murray goes down on his left knee and mm -hmm. he's ruled out and he leaves the yeah, game. And big, he leave, and it's going to be a big game. miss. So it's going to be a big miss. They're fourth in the West. Hopefully he's not, he does, he's not ruled out of the playoffs. Just wanted to quickly touch on, on the Lakers, obviously the surprise team in the East, mm -hmm. the Knicks, beating them, like you said, 111 to the um, Lakers, 96. Um, I was going to say Julius Randle, just a shout out to him, mm -hmm. 34 mm -hmm. points, 10 rebounds. And yeah, and Derek Cruz, 14 as well, 14 points as well. Just, just wanted to give them a quick shout out because Knicks fans have been very depressed, haven't made the playoffs since 2013, wow. I think. So, wow. Yeah, hopefully they can make the playoffs. Eight, they're eighth seed in the East, so yeah. All right, and I hope I hope um, LeBron and Anthony Davis get back as quickly yeah. as they can. LeBron's back in three weeks. Yeah. So all right. Okay. So that's it. All right. So um, let's uh, move on to the papers uh, with the few um, minutes we have left on the show. Let's do that quickly. We have the Sporting Live, we have Complete Sports, and we have uh, the Sporting Sun. Three papers for review. But let's start with this Sporting Live. Let's see how far we can go uh, this morning. Sporting Live, then you have stories. Um, Ian Acho mm -hmm. disappointed despite scoring a brace. Mm -hmm. That's it on your screen. Some other interesting stories. Um, you, you look at your screen, you look at the stories. Which, quickly, which one of those stories gets you talking? Really? Oh, it's Kele, our, our very own Kele. Senior man Kels. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm so happy for him. Because when he was in Man City, we were talking about him like he's the new come in, he's the mm -hmm. new boy in town, putting mm -hmm. him lights of Rashford, Martial. Yep. And for me, he just became heavy. Mm -hmm. Became heavy as a player. He wasn't quick off his mark. Mm -hmm. He wasn't as sharp. But now he's found that form. And yeah, I feel like his team let him down against West Ham, though. All right. Partying the night before. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right, Complete Sports is the next paper for review. Joe Aribo, uh, the, the, the Super Eagles player a lot of people love. Joe Aribo saying, I want to score in every game. Eagles star relishes eighth goal of the season. Of the players playing in his position in the Super Eagles, he's the only one that has the heart's goal. That's a dimension to his game, and it's very hard to keep him on the bench. <sighs> With the night, personally, I won't sound like a patriot right now, but with Nigerian Super Eagles, I've been let down so many times. Ooh. So many <laughs> times. It hurts my heart, but yeah, he, he can't, he can't put him on the, you can't keep him on the bench. You can't keep him on the only one in form right now. And you want to have, with international football, mm -hmm. you want to have your most informed players on the pitch. Yeah. Being, playing, being the best on paper means nothing. So 
best players in form, put them on the pitch, definitely. All right. Okay, last paper <laughs> for review. And you seen the picture of uh, Victor Osime. Osime. That's it. Uh, Napoli uh, received the, the real Osime. 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 That's what he's I don't know if he, but he, he seems to be getting in among the goals uh, these finally, days. Finally, yes. Now he's finally found form because they were questioning the big transfer. Mm -hmm. They were questioning the big transfer. And I'm happy. And I'm happy for him finally finding his form. It's not easy to play out there in Napoli. It's not easy. Very passionate fans there. So, yeah. Happy for him. All right. So, parting shot as we go. What do you think is going to happen tonight? Uh, PSG go through, Chelsea go through. Is that what you're saying? Um, Chelsea definitely go through. I can't call Bayern PSG. I really can't. You can't go against the champions. But PSG, I, I want to see them go through. All right. Okay. So, that's going to be your parting shot <laughs> on the show. <laughs> Shimler, I didn't come on. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It was much your debut. Me. And I, I mean, thank you very much. And I enjoyed having you on the show. Again. We'll do this again some other time. Hopefully. All go. right. Thank you as well for allowing us to be a part of your day. We enjoyed doing this. We'll back here again tomorrow. I'll be at the Bye bye now.